I can see why people see this passage the way they do. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 does cause some people some little bit of confusion. Some see it as saying one thing, others see it as saying something totally different. And so what we want to do is look at what the passage says and try to see if we can see what the true issue is. Now, when we look at the passage, I can see why some will relate this passage as stating that Paul is con concerned about possibly him and others, but specifically him losing his salvation. The reason why is because of what it says about him becoming disqualified. So let's go ahead and read the passage and let's see what it actually says, because it could be that or it could be something else. He says in 1 Corinthians 9, starting in 24, he says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run? Now, before we start off, previously he's speaking about how he should be towards other people because Paul is trying to reap the benefits of them coming to Christ. Paul is anxious. Paul is excited about others, particularly Gentiles, since he is an apostle of the Gentiles coming to Christ. And he wants to be partakers of them coming to Christ. And so he says to them, I'd be like this or I might be like this. Why? In order to win some of them. And so he starts off in verse 24, picking up on that thought. He says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Now, he's using this analogy, but in regards to our salvation, it's not quite the same because it's not that there's only one prize. The prize is there for all of us, but he's given us an analogy and he says, but only one wins the prize. So run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable prize, a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable wreath. So you see the little shift right there. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim, I box in such a way as not beating the air, I, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. So is Paul stating that he's thinking about he has to run this way, do it this way so that he might not be disqualified? He says that uh, I preach to others uh, that I myself may not be disqualified. Is Paul preaching so that he would not be disqualified? Now, think about that for a second. Is Paul saying, hmm, I've got to preach, and if I don't preach, then I won't be disqualified? Well, if that's the case, what does that say about us, about you and I? If Paul doesn't preach, and he's worried about him not preaching be the reason why he's is going to be disqualified, as some might take it for salvation, well, then does that mean we have to also preach in order for us to not be disqualified? Some might say, well, that was just Paul's call and not ours. Well, we didn't have Jesus show up on a road to Damascus for us. And so how do we know exactly what our call is? Well, the issue is he's not speaking about, or Paul's not thinking or even contemplating him losing his salvation. What Paul is saying, Paul is not talking about that he would lose his salvation. Paul is talking about the manner in which he should run. Now, this word right here, a document is also important. We'll come back to this in a second because Paul is doing so in order to not be disqualified or a document. We'll come back to that in a second. But what is Paul saying? Therefore, I run in such a way. I run this way. How was he? How was he running? So that after he's preached to others that he himself will not be disqualified. In other words, he's simply saying that I want to run in a fashion to where I'm going after this one prize. Well, is there this one prize that only one person can win? Well, no. Uh, the prize that we're going to get, we believe, I believe we've already attained it. Jesus says that we have passed from death into life and we will not come into judgment. But how should we run? Should we run or act in a lackadaisical fashion? Should we act as though, well, it's already done, no need to worry, uh, not even worry or concerned about others? Well, in doing so, we might end up showing that we ourselves might not be one of Jesus's, might not be one of his chosen, might not be a child of God. There are many people who believe that they are saved and are not saved. Paul is telling us how we ought to move in life, how we ought to show ourselves, how we ought to run, how we ought to proceed. Paul is not concerned about possibly himself being disqualified. This word, a document, the reason why I want to bring this up is I want to show you another passage or I want to show you something over on uh, in Lagos. So let's go over to Lagos and look at this. In Lagos, this word that's used here is this word, a document. And I want to pull up this, this portion right here, a document where this word is also used in Lagos. And so here we, we see in 2 Corinthians, 
three fifteen. I'm sorry, three uh, three five. He says, "Test yourselves." I'm sorry if you can see that. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you recognize this about yourself that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test. Now, the issue is about him saying, "Test yourselves." Make sure that you are a believer. That part should be understood. Now, the word that's used here for the word "unless you indeed indeed you te- you fail the test" is the word "adakama." So he says, "Make sure that you are not disqualified, or that you are not worthy, or that you are not part of." Make sure that you have Christ. If you have Christ, uh, the issue of you being disqualified is not there. Now, look at what look how Paul puts it for himself. Remember. If we think that Paul is saying that he's running in such a way so that he would not be disqualified, then is Paul actually worried about he himself being disqualified? No. If we just stroll down to verse 6, notice what he says. But I trust you will realize that we ourselves do not fail the test. And what's the word that's used there? A document. So I trust that you realize we are not disqualified. I trust that you realize that is not us. And so even though Paul is stating Going back to this passage, even though Paul's saying that he's running in a way so that he would not be disqualified, he, st- he states and says that w- he will be qualified. He will not be one that is disqualified. As a matter of fact, thinking back to when Paul was saved, when Paul met Christ, what were we told? Going to Acts twenty two fourteen, as he recounts what, what happened on the road to Damascus, uh, he says in verse 14, the God of our fathers, this is Ananias saying this to, to, to Paul, by the way, the God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see righteousness. Well, look at what he says. He has appointed Paul to see his will and to see righteousness. Now, is Paul going to see righteousness? Sure, Paul knows. As a matter of fact, Paul is reiterating that. One, and to hear an utterance from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. So now we can kind of understand Paul was never in any doubt as to whether he is going to lose anything. Paul was assured. Paul was told that you will see his face. You are you have appointed been appointed to righteousness. And so Paul is not concerned about that. As a matter of fact, Paul also tells us the Church of Philippians uh, and Church of Philippi in Philippians 3.14, he tells us, 3.12, I'm sorry, he tells us the sort of attitude that we have to have starting there. He says, not that I've already obtained it or have already become perfect. But I press on so that I may lay hold of that which is which also I was laid hold of by Christ. So I'm pressing forward to lay hold of that. He says, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and reaching forward to this, to what lies ahead. I press toward press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. As many of us that are perfect, that's us believers, have this attitude. And if any and if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. So what standard should we live? Well, the standard that we have attained. We are holy people. We are godly people. We are headed to, to, uh, to heaven. So let's live that way. Paul's whole point is having this attitude. And so if you've got this attitude, well, then run in this attitude, run in this way, going back to uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, um, 26, run in such a way. I, Paul, therefore I run in this way. Paul is not concerned about salvation because he's telling us that he's not concerned about salvation, that he's not one of those who are disqualified. He's been appointed to see. And by the way, this word for being appointed, let's go back to this. This word here uh, for appointed is pros ekarisata, which is that he has been placed. By the way, this is the middle indicative past tense. So it happens to him. Past tense happened in the past and it's happened to him. He has been appointed. He has been chosen to see the righteousness of God. So he's not concerned about not seeing it, but he's going to run just in case he's going to run. So as that's the prize that he's going for. So hopefully it makes sense now. It's not enough for us as believers to just sit back and relax because we're, we are believers, because we're saved. No, run as if, one, you need to obtain it. Two, run in order to make an example for others. You want to see other people there. Now, what happens if you don't? Well, there are those 
who are not believers who think they are. That's why Paul brings up this issue in 2 Corinthians 3, 13, I'm sorry, where he says, test yourselves to make sure that you are not disqualified. But I trust that you are like himself. So how should we believe? How should we move? How should we um, run this race? As though there's one prize and we are all trying to get it. Now, those of us that are in him, we will see, we will receive this victory, but run as if you still want to win. Amen.